Lane Kiffin. He had something to say. It was very interesting. It's actually something that we've talked about quite a bit on this show. But Ari, I find it different when a sitting SEC head coach says, you know, it might not be the best thing to make the SEC championship game. I mean, like, I understand there's only one argument against it, Andy, and is if you have to play an extra game, there's a higher likelihood that one of your best players gets hurt. Like, that's the only argument against it. Because, let's be honest, would you rather play two games against teams that you're going to be favored by 15 to 20 against, or would you rather play one game or, or uh, one game against the team that you're either a dog or favored by one? Like, it's just simple common sense to me. So... Um, he hasn't even played his clip yet, so I'm sorry for blowing it, but like play the clip, but it's true. Yeah, here's here's Lane at his press conference yesterday talking about the SEC championship game. You know, it's 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 changed. The conference championship um you know could could have a big impact both ways for people. So uh, I've talked to other coaches, so I'll just kind of give you the feeling from some other coaches that, you know, they don't want to be in it. You know, the, the risk to get a buy, um, sorry, the reward to get a buy versus the risk to get knocked out completely. I mean, that, that's a that's a pretty big, that's a really big risk um, just to get a buy. So um, I think it's ended up being a very unique situation of all, you know, postseason sports, the way that that, that system set up there and how you could go to that and get knocked out. And if you don't go, you're in. I'm not a big gambler, but that's the kind of one of them Vegas, you know, like poker table thing. Like, uh, that's all in. And you're going all in, and you're going all in in the best conference in football. So you got to play somebody great too. Very different than a lot of these other conferences. Usually, so, when you go all in, Lane, you know you're probably going to win. Just so you know, uh, but yeah, the, uh, I've been all in a few times in my life and it's, it's worked out sometimes and it's worked out pretty terribly at others, but like, I understand exactly what he's saying, Andy, like it, it makes perfect sense. And you know, if you're going to penalize the loser of the deal, then that's it. But like the thing that I think is interesting too, is that doesn't the SEC championship game also represent different things for different programs? Like, I feel like Ole Miss winning the SEC would be a really, really big deal for them. Whereas yes. Georgia and Alabama would rather probably have the easy path too. So like, I, I don't want to, obviously making a run in the playoff is the only thing that matters now to the big time programs that have invested a lot of money in their, uh, um, in their roster and their program. But like, I wonder if you asked Ole Miss fans, would you rather win the SEC championship or make the playoff and get knocked out in the first round? I bet you they would take the SEC championship, right? They would if they knew that's the option, but they want to make the playoff and, and win the national title, yeah. which you and I have said, we've seen it up close. Like we saw it up close against Georgia a couple weeks ago. If they were playing this way, they can beat everybody in the playoff. It doesn't mean they will, but they can. And I think they would rather win the national title than win the SEC title. But that's... It, that's not a sure thing, obviously. The SEC and he's championship only, game, it's a, it's a one one or the other is going to win it. And he's only talking about getting in and out. Now, what about if you play in the SEC championship game or the Big Ten championship game and you're incentivized to lose? Because if you look at some of these projections, if you look at your bracketology, would you rather be the one seed or the five seed? That's going to be the, the situation. Prob with the problem is Oregon. you might not be the five seed. We keep assuming the loser of the championship game is the five seed. Ari... We just we we did the scenario last week when we did disaster scenarios. It's entirely possible Texas A like let's say Texas A beats Texas this week. This is why my bracketology looks the way it looks, where I don't have Texas or Texas A and M in, and I have them both as the the first two out. If Texas A and M beats Texas, makes the AC the SEC championship game, they would play Alabama probably. If they lose to Alabama, they'd have three losses. One of those losses would be to Notre Dame, which is going to get in over them. One of those losses would be to South Carolina, and one of those losses would be to Alabama. So I don't know that they'd make it in. 
if well, Indiana's he, eleven and one and Penn State's eleven and one, like I don't know that they would make it in in that scenario. I know, but I'm focusing on the situations where you know it would happen. Like if you're Oregon, for instance, and you make the Big Ten championship game as an undefeated team, if you lose in the Big Ten championship game, you're going to be the five seed. Like that, I think you can. You but can if, draw but if you're Lane Kiffin, things. if you are Lane Kiffin right now, you don't want to make the like you want to beat Florida. You want to, you basically you want to beat the hell out of Florida and beat the hell out of Mississippi State. Because be you are, pro- we don't know what the committee is going to say tonight, but I suspect Ole Miss will be fairly comfortably in. Like they, maybe they're not hosting a game, but they're like the nine seed, and all they'd have to do is win two. Like they don't want to go play in the SEC championship game and have the possibility of taking the third loss. Yeah, and we also don't know how the committee is going to react to teams that are on the bubble who get to play in, their, in that game, right? Like I, I think that they yeah. will penalize people for losing. Um, and that's because that's kind of just the way it's been forever. But, you know, I do think that at the end of the year, if there is a 10 and two team and a 10 and three team and the loss occurs in the SEC or the Big Ten or whatever championship game you want to reference, that I still probably would take the 10 and three team, like if it were up to me. Like it's just that makes the most sense to me. But, you know. It, yeah. But, and I think it depends on the team. I think Ole Miss 10 and three narrow loss to an Alabama or somebody like that in the SEC championship game, you probably feel a little better about them than say if it's if it's Texas AM and they barely beat Texas and they lose, you know, in a in a bad way to Alabama. Like also, a, a lot playing of the SEC depend on how the game goes. Playing in the SEC championship and playing in a one possession game against the SEC champion, I think is evidence that you are equipped to play in close games on the next stage too. Like part yeah. of it too I know that the selection committee's entire job is to rank the teams in, in terms of how good they think everyone is. And I know that we're not rewarding losses, but like the whole goal of the system too is to create a atmosphere and environment in the playoff where there's not as many blowouts as we found in the four team field. Right. Um yes. so like to me, if you're if you're going against a team that lost in one of the major championship games by a touchdown and the other options are teams that have been blown out. Um, I still think that that loss is more impressive, even though, you know, I can't stand the quality loss thing. So we've got one more clip from Lane Kiff and we're going to play that in a second. We're also going to bring in our friend, Ralph Russo from the athletic who likes to argue with us as if we are con- currently doing the show, usually three or four days after we've done a show. And I try to go, wait, 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 what did I say three days ago? Yeah, I'm probably wrong on that, but that's okay. But before we get to Ralph and to more of Lane Kiffin, I got to tell you about Roback. Wearing my Roback Performance hoodie right now, the most comfortable thing I own. And I got about seven of them. Well, I had about seven of them. I have about four of them now because my daughter has uh, migrated a few of them to her closet because that's what happens. When people get a chance to wear one of these Roback Performance hoodies, they ain't giving it back because it is the most comfortable garment known to man. But Roback also makes polos, Q-zips, shorts, joggers. The new jogger material is spectacular, buttery soft. So if you want to gear up, go to Roback.com. That's R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use the code Andy for 20% off your first purchase. That's Andy for 20% off your first purchase. Roback.com, R-H-O-B-A-C-K. If you're going to order a performance hoodie, you may as well order two because somebody in the family is stealing one of them. All right, let us us welcome our friend Ralph Russo from The Athletic, formerly the Associated Press, formerly the the keeper of the AP poll. Ralph, I always love that you got yelled at for what happened in the AP poll and you never actually voted in it. Yeah, I mean, Pete, you could still yell at me for it. I mean, I I, I did it for twenty years. So if if you're looking for somebody to vent to, you know, fine, you know, come come to me. But yes, never never for a second did I ever vote in the AP poll. Now I'm at the Athletic, and I can be a little more critical of the AP poll. But I will always say I respect what that poll does and what those people do to to uh, who vote on it. So all good. Ralph, you should write a column about how the AP poll doesn't matter for the Athletic. <laughs> I would never do that because I would do you want to hear my spiel. No, I don't even want to get into the spiel. It does matter. It does matter historically because at the end of the year, teams care who's number 19, right? Like in, at the final with the well, I, I the used to get really part. mad at the, the fans of those teams that would yell at me when I was a voter. How yeah. could you rank 
my team number 21 and this team number 19. And I'm like, to paraphrase Ricky Bobby, <laughs> if you ain't first, you're last, who cares? Yes. And that really made them mad. So yeah. I realized that when I first started doing that, uh, like 20 years ago, uh, that that role for the AP of like the people, the, the 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 teams at the bottom, those fans would get even more riled up. And I'd be like, dude, like you're 24 or you're not like, who cares? Like at this point, you're really battling over 24. But not nah, people take it seriously. They so, can't. Yes, that's why the AP poll will always matter. I'm no longer an AP poll, uh, an AP employee, but I will always defend that poll. All right, let's let's hear Lane because Ralph, I, I know you were listening in. Yeah. We were talking about Lane's initial count. So he got asked a really good follow up about the SEC championship game as well, and and expounded on that point a little bit. And just to follow up on it, do you feel like it's inadvertently maybe diluted the meaning of not just the SEC but some of these other conference championships that weekend? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that's a secret. I think it it definitely has. Um, you know, so. It just is what it is. Whenever, there's a cost and benefit to everything. There's great benefits to this playoff system and so many people being excited and fans and programs and more games. And then there's cost too. You know, the, the conference championships don't, don't mean as much. Um, and it's not just do you potentially get knocked out by losing it. Do you go get more injuries. So you're going to go get more injuries, play another game to get a buy, but then the other people are having a buy while you're playing. So I think that's why I ain't going to go on record of saying it, why a lot of coaches or some coaches I've, I've talked to don't want to go to it. And I think that's the big question. And, and Ralph, I'll, I'll, I'll direct it to you first, because I, I think with the SEC and the Big Ten, but, but particularly the SEC this year, the, the push-pull is, yeah, you might get a bye, you might win an SEC championship, but if you are the team that loses that game, you are probably in worse position than your fairly similarly situated other SEC teams that made the playoff that didn't have to play in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I disagree with Lane on the idea that you might get knocked out. Now, we may see that eventually, and I might be proven wrong, but if I look at the SEC landscape in particular and the Big Ten landscape, because that's the other conference, you know, frankly, at this point in the ACC and the Big, and the Big 12, it's winning in and, and you're yeah. out probably. I mean, at this point, we're probably not talking at largest for those. But I don't see a scenario where and again, maybe this is me being overly optimistic about what, what's going to happen in the SEC and the Big Ten. Certainly in the Big Ten, I think whoever gets the Big Ten championship game is going to be it, right? Whatever Big Ten championship game participants, those two teams are going to get in. In the SEC, I understand it being a little less clear because you have all these two lost teams, but I think that they won't be punished for playing and in, in losing a big game. Andy, you mentioned A&M as the mm -hmm. one that maybe I would be most worried about. Okay, sure, maybe. But I do think that like, I, I do think that the SEC participants in the SEC championship game are going to get in. Lane is right. It's not as meaningful as it used to be. And he's right in far in terms of like, hey, it's given and, give and take, right? We have this great new system, but you know, that other thing doesn't isn't quite as meaningful. I'm not, I'm not sold on the idea that you have to be worried about getting knocked out. I will say one also thing. I thought I thought his way of describing it was awesome. That like you're 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 playing for a buy while everybody else has a buy. So how much of an advantage is it? So right. That's an interest. I hadn't really thought of it that way, but that's a really good point. Well, the the difference there is that you're playing in a game that may or may not end your season, and they're not. They're going to be playing in an extra game that could. So I, I think that that. Texas A&M is the number one focus point here too, because I think you're wrong about that, Ralph. I think if A&M is 10 and two and loses in the SEC championship game, they're not going to get in at the expense of a Tennessee or something. Like there's going to be a team out there that beat Alabama and Georgia that only has two losses. And I, I just, I hope you're right. I hope that that's the way it goes, but like, I actually think there's a possibility and I don't know if this is insane, but Andy, you tell me, Ralph, you tell me. That AM beats Texas, Texas finishes 10 and 2 on the season, 
AM goes to the SEC championship game, loses the SEC championship game, and they still take Texas over them. Isn't that within the realm of possibility? Or do they not have enough quality wins? I, I don't think that is, but I'll I'll throw one at you that, that probably is equally infuriating for, for people, not for AM fans, obviously, but Texas beats Texas AM, loses badly in the SEC championship game, gets trapped in the who have you beaten game. 11 and two and doesn't make it. I don't think that would happen, but I, I, I do worry that that might, cause like if you're going to put 11 and two Texas against, let, let's say Texas lost to Alabama in the sec championship game. And it was, it was a, a, a fairly big margin. Texas or Tennessee, like 11 and two Texas or 10 and two Tennessee, who you, who you taking? Well, I think I would take Tennessee in that situation because I think adding a blowout that's into the Texas mix. Texas getting screwed by losing the championship yeah. game. Well, I know, but I think that also, too, being blown out in the only two games that you played against teams that are really, really good uh, in terms of like how we view as the elite would be a bad look. And like that's the interesting curveball that you add in there. It's like there's a difference between losing a close competitive game against a really good team in the SEC championship and there's a, and, and getting your ass kicked. Like if you get your ass kicked, I think that changes the calculus of the well, brain. Okay, twenty three to fifteen, the same as the same margin as the Georgia game. Yeah. I, so I, I, again, I feel like there's less of a chance of this. That that I think I do you, too, but I'm saying it's possible. But but here's my other. Here's my. It's it's definitely possible. And listen, we we're all going to be sort of surprised by how this thing plays out because we've never seen it play out before. So to a certain degree, we're all just like taking morsels of information and extrapolating and trying to come up with conclusions when we've never seen this happen before. What what I take issue with a lot, and this is a, a slightly broader discussion. Let me just let me just fan it out a little bit. Is I think we get way too bogged down on two or three games that these teams play. Like I, I really get like, well, they, you know, what's their good loss and what's their bad win and what's their good win. Like, like the totality of a schedule, man, the totality of how you play. Like I understand. And I, I'm with you. I I've been texting you guys this, this premise. I think Texas and Texas A&M might be a, an elimination game. Like I think the loser of that game could very well be out. And, and but I also see Texas, despite the fact that its schedule hasn't been as good as a really good team that is like that is like handling its business at a high level. I, I really try to emphasize a little bit more of like who you play, oh, excuse me, how you play as opposed to being so oh, okay. Okay, Ralph, play. Texas went to Arkansas and 120 to 10. Ole Miss went to Arkansas two weeks earlier and won 63 to 31. Yeah, but but again, like, who handled you're, you're, business better there? But but again, you're taking like one game against one game. Like I mean, listen. I, but we can I, we can we can take I, other I, games too. I, I, but I'm with, I think I'm with Ralph on this, Andy. Like yeah, Texas like, has yeah. has won their games pretty pretty yeah. easily this year. Like for the most part. Like I, I listen. I know, Except I know for the Vandy people, Vandy, Vandy game and but Vandy beat Alabama. So. I know sometimes people hate the math nerd stuff, but like if you look at all the power, the SP plus, FEI. FPI, all those things. Like I like to look at them all. Like Texas is like a top five team in pretty much all of them. And well, that's where, like Ohio But Indiana's State not getting in at eleven and one. If if we're just going with all that, so well, you know what? That not necessarily because if you look, Indiana is about Indiana's rankings in a lot of those places is about the same as Tennessee. Like again, like how they have played more than just who they have played counts for them. The fact that they have torn up everybody on their schedule is meaningful and i say that for any team not just indiana so again my big issue with a lot of this this resume argument is you end up sort of trying to boil it down to one or two games what i'm saying like all these games count how did you play in all of your games 